Hello and welcome to an episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason in Fort Hill Cemetery in Auburn, New York. It is one of the most important cemeteries here in New York State, and for many reasons why. There are a lot of notable people buried here. I'll be showing you a few. I mean, there's a lot of politicians, a lot of local notables, but I'm sure you've heard of a lady named Harriet Tubman. Yes, her final resting place is here, as well as a notable Secretary of State, and I'll show you some more along the way. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little bit of history. So from here, you get a really nice view. I mean, there, are, there is a big hill that you gotta get up, and that's where I drove from. But this is under 83 acres of land, and this cemetery was incorporated on May 15th, 1851, under its official name, Trustees of the Fort Hill Cemetery Association of Auburn. And it was built on what was a fortified village of the Cayuga Nation. But there's also a historical marker at the entrance, and I just didn't think about including it in this video, but it just tells a short history, basically what I just said. But there are an estimated 22,000 burials here. And again, many notables, but I'm just gonna go ahead and start the tour. And here's the first burial about to explore. This is the grave of Jerome Holland, also known as Brud. It's very modest, but who was Jerome Holland? He lived from 1916 to 1985. He was a Cornell football star Cornell University is about 40 miles south of here in Ithaca, but he was a U.S. ambassador to Sweden, and he later became the first African-American director of New York Stock Exchange. Rest in peace, Mr. Holland. And now here is a section that has a few notable burials. Over here, this white one right here, is the one for Martha Coffin Wright whose husband David is buried next to her. But Martha was a sister of Lucretia Mott, who was one of the friends of Elizabeth Cady Stanton at the formation of the women's rights movement here in the United States. She was very active, and she was also the mother of Eliza Osborne, who was buried right here. So about Eliza, she was a philanthropist, and a leader in the women's movement. Born September 3rd, 1830 to July 18th, 1911. And just next to that is the in-ground marker for Lithgow, Osborne, and Lily. So about Lithgow, who lived from 1892 to 1980, newspaper publisher and was an ambassador to Norway. And then finally, Thomas Mott Osborne and the wife of his, Agnes Devins. Thomas was born in 1859, passed away in 1926. He was the warden of Auburn and Sing, Sing Sing prisons. He was a prison reformer. May they all rest in peace. We are now approaching the grave of William Seward. William Henry Seward, that is. Seward was best known as the United States Secretary of State under Presidents Abraham Lincoln and Andrew Johnson from 1861 to 1869. Previously before that, he was a United States Senator and the Governor of New York. Seward was also an opponent of the spread of slavery during the years before the American Civil War. He was also a prominent figure in the formation of the Republican Party during the 1850s. During his time as Secretary of State, Seward was also well known for negotiating the treaty for the United States to purchase Alaska Territory from Russia. In 1867, the land for Alaska cost $7.2 million. The whole thing would be known as Seward's Folly, as many people thought the land would be unproductive. That is, until gold was discovered there years later. And now here is the site of the Case family, but the grave we're visiting right now is the grave of Theodore Case, Theodore Willard Case, who lived from 1888 to 1944. He was an American chemist and inventor, and he was best, best known for his invention of the movie tone sound on film system. You got it. <laughs> and buried next to him is his wife, Alice, and they had four children, and I'm assuming these are two of the children. 
John P. Case, and then Theodore W. Case Jr., who served in World War II, lived from 1920 to 2000. But it was in 1916 when he opened Case Research Lab here in Auburn, where he studied all materials that could be altered by light. His studies led to the development of the thalophide cell, a light-sensitive vacuum tube from 1916 to 1918. It was originally used by the United States Navy in a top-secret infrared signaling system developed at the Case Lab. In 1921, he began working on the sound-to-film process. The inventions of the Case Research Lab um, in the first 10 years from 1916 to 1926 were the creation of the Case and Earl I. Sponable, who worked with Case at the lab until he went with Case to Fox Film Corporation in 1926. And there was a test going on, and one of the attendees was Thomas Edison, who was contracted by the Navy to evaluate new technologies. And it was a complete success. And again, it was used by the Navy for a number of years. But he made several test films throughout the 1920s during the whole silent era, including Gus Visser and his singing Duck, which was added to the National Film Registry in 2002. But unfortunately, a lot of those test films were destroyed by fire in the 1950s. The research lab is now a museum open to the public. I mean, there's a lot of other technological details in history I can go into, but overall, the thalified cell was part of the important new technology of the talkies, or talking pictures, also known as phonofilm. Rest in peace, Mr. Case. And lastly, we're going to visit the grave site of Harriet Tubman, the Moses of her people. And she was a slave on a Maryland plantation, and she couldn't bear her cruel treatment. She later said, there was one of two things I had a right to, liberty or death. If I could not have one, I would have the other, for no man should take me alive. And then she escaped to Pennsylvania, aided by the Underground Railroad, a series of secret safe houses for runaway slaves heading north. And then she became a preeminent guide on the railroad, making 19 trips south and back, leading more than 300 slaves, including her parents, to freedom. And this is her grave. It's got an inscription on the back of it. To the memory of Harriet Tubman Davis, heroine of the Underground Railroad, nurse and scout in the Civil War, born about 1820 in Maryland, died March 10th, 1913, at Auburn, New York. Servant of God, well done. Erected by the Empire State Federation of Women's Clubs on July 5th, 1937. Now, it is believed that she was born in 1822 because... When I was driving through this town, I saw like 200th anniversary banners for Harriet Tubman's birth from 1822 to 2022, which was last year. But she is buried by some of her family members, including her nephew, William Henry Stewart Jr., and his wife, Emma Stewart. And also her brother, William Henry Stewart Sr., is buried in front of him. But here lies one of the most courageous people in the history of the United States. I hope many people come out this way to see this, as well as the home nearby, which is part of the National Park System. But Harriet Tubman, may she continue to rest in peace and power. All right, thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Historically Marked. I know there are plenty that I left out, including a lot of war heroes, a lot of politicians, and many um, Auburn locals, but I thought I'd show you some that I found very interesting. And of course, um, a lot of people have heard of Harriet Tubman, and maybe you've, maybe there's somebody else that um, you can tell me about in the comments. So, all right, I am Jason in Fort Hill Cemetery in Auburn, New York, signing off. <laughs>